Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. It was a fall day, and it was a hot day during the fall. The waterfalls on in the fall. Anyway, um, everybody, bodies every. Got something I want to share with you guys. This is a sharing time. I went to the... Social Security office yesterday. I told someone, I said, hey, got an appointment next week with Social Security. I need somebody that drives me dead. Would you care to be my Huckleberry and drive me to the Social Security office? He said, sure, I'll take you to the Social Security office. I said, well, before you do that, my solar panels ain't working right. I need your help. Oh, I'll help you with that, because I knows a little bit about that. All right. Finally got the solar working. Thank yous. Hey, before you go, I'll pay you $30 to help me move that right there over there. Just $30 just to help me move it. Okay. All right. It's kind of heavy, but I'll put most of the weight on me. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, good. Lay it right there. Oh, look at that. Dogs, got to let the gate open. Oh, look at the dogs are going out, and you playing with the dogs. Well, you, we got work to do. Hey, Max, get off of him. Okay, let's go. Ten minutes later. All right, lay it right there. Okay, right there. Hold on. Three minutes later. Okay, you can let it go. All right, right there. Okay, there you go. See, perfect. That's what I need. I can take care of it from there. Thank you very much. Hey, where the dogs at? They were over where? Over there by that abandoned house? Oh, yeah, I take them over there from time to time for a walk. I'll go get them in a second. All right, let me go get that food, I promise you. I'm going to go uh, get that food, and I'm, I'm going to go get them dogs. Here go the food. Told you I don't eat chicken. Here you go. No, no, no. They, they all individually wrapped. Ain't none of them been open. If they were open, I wouldn't give it to you. I throw it away. So, yeah, go on now. I got to go get them dogs now. What? $30. Oh, uh, really? Really? My dogs are going all the way over there. They're running further away, and you want me to go inside and not go get my dogs. Okay, no, no, I, 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 I'll go get it. Here, your 30. No, it's 25. I don't have 30 on me. Here's 25. Now, let me go get my dogs. Where they at? Oh, you took your eyes off of them. Mother. Okay, no, 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 I got it. Let me go get my dogs. Ten minutes later, the person you've called is not available at this time. Please leave your name and number at the tone. Hey, I'm sitting over here looking for the dogs and I can't find them. I don't see them anywhere. I don't know where they are. I've been looking for ten minutes, driven several miles. Don't see the dogs. Okay. Talk to you later. Pulled up to my home. I'm like, oh well, dogs are gone. That was fun while it lasted. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the experience I had about a week ago. The dogs did come back the next morning. Both dogs came back, no problem. <sighs> because they realized where home was. Plus they were hungry. <laughs> and so I put them back in their cage. And that's where they stay to this day. Now it's time for us to go to Social Security. The person and I go, they have a passenger, no problem. They, I pay for gas, so I pay for the gas to and from. So I make sure they get a full tank because that's what I do. I pay my way. In times past, they would bring gas containers and expect me to fill up their gas containers, five gallon gas, gas containers. Well, this time the person brought two gas containers. Now I told him I would be bringing my gas containers to fill them up because I have my extra vehicles here and I also have the generator. But I didn't tell him that I'd fill up his gas containers. But of course the person brings the gas containers and expects me to fill it up and I speak up this time. I said, uh uh, wait, hold on a minute. You didn't tell me nothing about bringing ex well you don't have to do it i no no it's okay you don't have to do it oh look here mother i know i don't have to do it then i 
out of courtesy for taking me to where I needed to go and being a person not of color and getting them to give him proof of his being alive, having earned wages, being alive. At the same time, they were refusing to give me the same documentation. Hold on. That's right, discrimination. Live and direct. That's what I'm going after the Social Security Administration for. I just needed to prove it. They didn't know we, well, they knew we were together, but the manager didn't know we were together. You see, they didn't know he was going to be asking for the same thing because I asked for a bunch of things. So they had no clue what we were there for. So I got her to sit up there and discriminate against me as a result of my skin color because he was able to receive the very same information being requested. Praise the Lord. You see, discrimination is not hard to prove. See, the, the, the way the law is written, you can't prove discrimination because they want you to jump through hoops. So what I had to do was demonstrate it. So it's called manipulation, which is why I didn't mind paying. Well, this person brought along their dog, little puppy. It's not really a puppy. It's one of those little squeezable dogs where you hold them out the window and you go, you got to go. Okay, squeeze. And you squeeze them and they go and then you bring them back inside the window. Andrew Dice Clay, thank you for that one. Okay, well, he had one of them. And... Of course, the doggy was in the back with me because there were three people in the vehicle. But the back seat had other things in it besides me and the doggy. So the doggy was right next to me, sitting on top of me. I didn't mind it. Didn't mind it. But it wasn't part of the plan. We're only supposed to be going to get gas and going to the post office. But he had other plans. He had to go shopping and get some work done on a tire for the vehicle and things like that. No problem. I'm on his time. I don't on. But then I'm paying for gas. There's another passenger who's along for the ride. I'm paying for gas. And he wants to get frustrated. Act like he's fatigued. Because Social Security took over an hour. And he decided to wait in the car. So I pulled the guy to the side. When they went to Costco's, see, they had to go to Costco's to get some food. So when I went to Costco's, these are all surprises to me. The tire, the gas containers, the dog, the friend, all surprises. I, lo I love surprises. You guys have no idea how much I love surprises. I tell people all the time, I can't stand surprises. I, I mean, I love surprises. Anyway, they go to Costco's. I said, well, look at that. Home Depot is right there. I need to go to Home Depot. So while you guys go to Costco's, two birds, one stone. There you go. I'll go to Home Depot and I'll meet you guys over at the gas trying to get gas then I thought about it I said wait a minute these people have just gotten off work we got those gas containers I said they're not going to be happy well that's too bad excuse me we can go the amount of time it takes us to wait in this line we could have gone to a different gas station but of course it's okay to piss other people off to make other people upset sorry I understand supposedly so we go back to the place where the tire is being worked on because they needed some time because there was no appointment set just showing up. And so they, the, the person had to wait until they could fit them in, which was going to take about an hour. And so we get back at the time just before they close, which means it took over three hours. And they get ready to set the tire on. And his dog is playing with another person's dog. I remember, same person who allowed my dogs to run off into the distance, didn't keep an eye on them, but knew that I was concerned about them running off into the distance. <sighs> His dog is playing with another dog, having fun, whatever dogs do. And so, tires on, receipts given, everybody's saying goodbye, see y'all later. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I need y'all to hold on, let me find out what this is. Apologize, that was Walmart Pharmacy. That was me telling them I don't do drugs. No, seriously, I don't do drugs, so I don't go to the pharmacy. I don't need nothing from the pharmacy. <sighs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, the doctors prescribe stuff all the time, but there's nothing they can prescribe for me that was gonna work. The amount of pain that I've been in, what are they gonna do, prescribe me pain medication? It's not pain medication. I don't know why we call it pain medication. It doesn't get rid of pain, it just numbs the body. The pain is still there. So, I can handle the pain. I can't stand the rain. 
against my window. I can't stand the rain. Who's got the keys to the Jeep? Boom. Beep, beep, beep. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go and get some other items from the store because we didn't get enough from Costco's. Yeah, you know, we could have gotten the items from Costco's that we need to get from the regular store, but we're going to go to the regular store because we didn't get it from Costco's. So, now let's go to the store. Driving to the store, and we're talking about situation, you know, just regular talk that guys do. And all of a sudden, phone rang. Ring, ring. Hello? Not my phone, his phone. Huh? Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Click. Hey, we got to go back. Got to go back for what? I left the dog there. You left your dog there? Wait, hold up a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. I know. I'm doing a minute. Oh, God. Wait. Wait a minute. You left. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. You left. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Yes, I'm doing a video on this one. Oh, God. The irony of this. You just don't understand. This is irony. Ladies and gentlemen, didn't care nothing about my dog, and I see he didn't really care too much about his. I don't care if he listens to this video. I don't care. My dog's could have been gone forever, and I would have had to live with that. But we go, he brings his dog with him, and he leaves it behind. Now, I'm not saying that that's his fault. No, he simply forgot. But what I do tell you is everybody reads what they sow. I told you, no one has ever, ever, ever done something toward me. And there not have been a consequence. And if you don't see the irony in exactly what happened in that situation, and the fact that he would bring two five-gallon cans, knowing that I was going to fill it up, and then it's time for him. Time for him. Pay attention to buy these extra items. And he mentions that he doesn't have any cash on him. Because why? He had to spend the money on the five gallons worth of gas. Now I want you guys to pay attention. I did do one of the five gallons. It was $51 to fill up his truck. Pay attention plus another 25 to fill up that five gallon container. And that was just for him taking me. But he wanted to have another 25 because it was $5.19 per gallon to fill up another five gallon container worth of gas. Why? He didn't tell me and I'd already talked to him about that because he had done it at least twice before. And I told him, stop. And he did it again. So this time I spoke up, but I did fill up one of them. Why? Because I'm a man of my word is what I told him. So not only did I give him the $5 that I owed him, but he got a lot more. I even asked him, I said, when I ask you to take me someplace, do I not compensate you for your time and for your fuel? Yeah, yeah, more than enough. I said, well then, why is it that the person who's with you, who's not paying anything, who's along for the ride, wants to complain about the time? No, no, don't worry about him. Oh, no, I am worried about him because he's voicing this opinion out loud and he's doing it so I can hear it. Of course I'm going to worry about him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to hold my tongue every day of my life. So I'm there talking to the Social Security agent and he's listening to me talk to her and I can see the look on his face as if he disapproves of what I'm saying, as if he has a right. Keep your muck... Sorry, apologize. The agent looks at me and she tells me well you're not dead i can see you clean as day excuse me you have a policy that if we are gone for more than seven years we are presumed dead missing well look in your system and see if you have any records of me for the last 10 years well, we, we, the last thing we have for me is 2013. No, you don't have nothing from me in 2000. Well, it was just a return letter. That's right, a return letter. That's not from me. I didn't return that to you. 
Well, then we had something in 2000. What? What do you have in 2017? Something for me? You don't have nothing for me in 2017. I ain't wrote you in no 2007. Well, I'm not getting you. Blood. Really? So really? So you're not going to follow your own law? Do you not know the McDade Amendment requires you to follow your own administrative rules and procedures? And I just gave you, and she wrote it down. She wrote down the procedure and everything. So he heard me talking to her like this. Then she says, well, is that your address? Excuse me, miss. The first thing she said was, well, you received our letter. I said, I just told you that I've never received this document. This is my first time seeing this document. I've never seen this document before. It was never sent to me. Well, it was sent to you. We did send it to you. I said, excuse me, the next time I tell you something, don't you dare sit up here and call me a liar. I didn't call you a liar. I just told you I've never seen it before and you just said, yes, I have. That means you called me a liar. Don't you ever think you got the right to do that again. That's my conversation with her. She said I was rude. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, he wanted to have objection to my speaking to her that way. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you probably would have objection to you. You'd probably say, well, you need to be more curtsying. You, you need to just sit up there and curtsy and say, excuse me, ma'am. May I walk over to the other side of the street while you cross on this side of the street? Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't live in that era where a, a man of color had to capitulate to a person of non-color, ever. I didn't live in that era where a woman could disrespect a man on any level. No, 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 it's not about male chauvinists. You see, men always respected women. That was the way men, I didn't say a man, I said men were required to act, always to respect a woman. That's the way I was taught. Women were to always respect men. That's the way I was taught. This woman, remember I told you how I say woman. This woman decided, I said women are supposed to respect men. She's not a woman, she's a woman. This woman decided to disrespect me, decided to talk over me, decided to act like she controlled me, decided to act like she was in charge of me. I am nobody's slave, and I am nobody's nigga. That's right, you heard me say it. Not on this planet or any other. But this man who went with me decided that he wanted to judge the situation. He wanted to handle it for me. That what this person was doing to me was legitimate. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think so. You have better belief. So she asked me about my address. Well, why do you have a Las Vegas address? <laughs> you know what I told her? I said, because I can do whatever the I want. Just that simple. Unless you can show me where I don't have the right to do whatever I want, then you need to leave that one alone. Well, fine. Oh, I know it's fine. That's the conversation we were having. You guys know me. Everybody gets that same conversation when they sit up here and challenge me on something that I have a right to. This is not me proving I have a right to this or that. This is me letting that person know you need to stay out of my business. Sorry. No mincing of words. There are some people who can't handle that. Some people who say, I'm a supervisor and I can do whatever I want. And I'm the type of person who says, yeah, you are a supervisor. And you could do whatever you want to someone else. But you don't get to do what you want with me. I'm not your huckleberry. Now, if you want a huckleberry, you better go talk to some other mother hound. Mother I'm sorry. So as you can see, the experience was priceless yesterday because not only was someone taking advantage of me, but then this very same person has on at least one occasion made it appear. And I'm sorry, I, I just realized that I'm not on my headphone, so you guys are barely able to hear me because I'm moving around in the background. I apologize for that. <sighs> not only was there justice done you know the way things happen because the person 
got to experience what I experienced for a brief moment. That embarrassment of leaving that dog behind, that puppy, that right there, and the, <laughs> the fact that I laughed, whoo, priceless, priceless. And like I said, I don't care if the person listens to this video, and I don't care if they never take me anyplace else again. I could give up. I'm sorry. You must understand that this person is not my friend. This person doesn't care about me. This person is doing it for the money. This person doesn't care about me. This person is doing it because they want to get paid. Every time they've done something for me, I paid them, even though, now I want you guys to get this so that you understand. Even though when they had a legal matter, I wrote a motion for them to the court. My thing was, you need to file this and you need to sit back and allow it to do its job. Ladies and gentlemen, he filed it. The case is gone. They were coming after him for several things, not criminal matters, civilly criminal. Fines and all of that, up to $4,000, $5,000, whatever they were saying. And threatening to take his animals, because he has other dogs. Trying to cause him a lot of problems. And I just said, file this with the court and give it time to work. He, he thought that 500, because I have my $550 consultation fee, he said that was expensive, too high. Really? Man, I'm glad somebody can put a price on what I know. You follow me? I told him that is not even the price. That's The price is $12.95 per hour. Not $12.95, but $1,295 per hour. I said, that's a reduced rate. I said, not only have I had five corporations in the last six years ask me to come and be a consultant for their agency. Five. I said, but I've had judges talk about what I know and how I know. So if that's not worth what I said, then you ain't got to pay it and nobody else has to pay it. Ladies and gentlemen, I do know what I know. And that's all that I know. <sighs> so I just wanted to let you guys know what I go through and what I've been going through. I have the Social Security Administration singling me out the moment I go inside. I have the DMV blocking every access to everything, interfering with everything. Went back and went into the DMV to have them issue a duplicate license uh id card that i paid for now going on two years ago a year before it expired do you know they still haven't delivered it to this day they still haven't delivered it who doggy registration for automobiles yes i did that and they still haven't delivered that either sent them a letter they've ignored it we're have a hearing next week because uh, I'm going to get them for discrimination the same as I'm going to get the post office for discrimination. See, they're saying that I can't prove discrimination, which is why I prove discrimination all the time. This is California. California is just as prejudiced as any other place you go. They're just they're just politically correct about their discrimination. Yeah, they'll smile in your face all the time. They want to take your face. They're just backstabbers. Backstabbers. All these. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I go through. This is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Now, look, I have a consult, um, an individual that I've been trying to get this consult scheduled for over two weeks now. I keep giving him instructions, and he follows every instruction but the exact ex instructions I give him. I've been trying to be patient. He blames himself for everything, says it's all his fault and blah, blah, blah. I, I ain't got time for that. I, he tells me about all the mistakes and all the issues, and I don't care. L look, it's a consult. It's not a friendship. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here just to give you what you're asking for. And right now, all I ask is that you follow my instructions so that we can get this done. It's not working out that way. I told him to email me the link for his Skype account. Do you think he's done that? Of course not. I think he may have because I have the, it says five now, 
So I think he may have done it, so let me go ahead and check. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be started in a minute. And then those of you who are waiting on the documents, we should have those out to you by Monday of this week. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I just had to tell somebody about the, the lost pooch. Okay, gotta go. Oh, that's the title of this video, The Lost Pooch.